Today, we're going to be talking about autoimmunity and why antibodies are not here to hurt you. They're actually here to save you. They're part of your cleanup system and a regulatory tactic the immune system uses to clean itself and to eat itself up. This here is the model I've been developing over the past few years, and I've been studying autoimmunity since my diagnosis about a decade ago. We have what are called damps or alarmins. Damps and alarmins are essentially mediators that are released by white blood cells and granulocytes. So like neutrophils, eosinophil, mast cells, fibroblasts, those excrete these things called damps, damage associated molecular patterns, or other types of patterns that are ultimately called alarmins. And we're going to get into alarmins in a second. And the things that cause these white blood cells and granulocytes to excrete these alarmins are from traumas, like physical injury that sets off the entire cascade of wound healing. We have infections and in biofilms. Infections such as viruses and COVID and Epstein-Barr. We've got fungal infections as well that will trigger this cascade. Biofilms will also create degranulation and what's called atosis, the stimulation of extracellular traps for white blood cells and granulocytes. Toxins can do this, debris. So debris is just the term for parts of cells that need to be cleaned up, like trash. Proteopathies. Proteopathies are misfold of proteins. So when transcription happens in a cell and a protein is formed out of amino acids, sometimes that can go wrong and create these proteins that are not correct. And they can cause inflammation or agglutination, essentially sticking of things together. They can cause a bunch of different problems, but this can also trigger this process of releasing alarmins. Oxidized or glycosylated molecules. So when molecules such as proteins or lipids or sugar structures become oxidized, oxygen gets added to it and they react like a reactive oxygen species or glycosylated, which means that a sugar group is added to a protein in a way that it shouldn't be, such as a very common one knowing as like lectins and lipopolysaccharides. If you ever follow like Dr. Gundry, uh, that would be a good glycosylated molecule. And positive feedback loops. You know, we've been talking about uh, this whole thing, uh, you being a self-reorganizing complexification system, and you run on multiple positive and negative feedback mechanisms. So these things here, they cause these white blood cells to go into atosis and release these damps. So the ones that we're going to focus on, or for this video specifically, just for the, the diagram breakdown, are going to be extracellular traps and histones. So like, let's zoom in. We're looking at these histones. Histones are part of DNA. They get deacetylated when they are thrown out of the cell. See, the cell can either die in a process called pyroptosis or another process called ferroptosis, which is highly inflammatory, or it can still stay alive while creating these nets. So we're going to look at histone as a damp and histone here, or damps in general, they activate what are called pattern recognition receptors. Pattern recognition receptors are receptors on, this, on the outside of the cell that are able to pick up on pathogens, such as pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or like we're talking about danger-associated molecular patterns. There are other alarmins in this alarmin group, such as chromatin-associated molecular patterns that go as CAMPs, and there's homeostasis-altering molecular processes, which are HAMPs. Activation of these pattern recognition receptors turns on what's called the inflammasome. So if you've heard, ever heard of inflammation or like cytokine release or interleukin beta gets activated or interferon alpha or any of those kind of processes, they all go through what's called the inflammasome. And inflammasome can also signal to other cells to create more inflammation. And how it does is through the release of 
like damps and that create that you know histone would be an example and turns on these pattern recognition receptors and turns on the inflammasome and you get this positive feedback loop of a cascade of inflammation being created now what does your body do to take care of damps or alarms your body needs to be able to eat damage so the first thing we need to go through is that alarmins are antigens they will float around in the tissue and blood and pick up on the surrounding environment. That way, B cells can go back to the lymph nodes and create T cells or other phagocytotic immune cells to clean up that area. Antibodies themselves are opsonins. Opsonins are these charged signals that are able to bind to antigens, such as alarmins, and tell that cell, that T helper cell, or that macrophage, or whatever phagocyte is there, whether to eat it or to not eat it. It helps in the process of it creating a physical electrostatic charge. So they bind together so they don't break apart. And that way, something dangerous can bind to a opsonin. And that combination of something dangerous to an opsonin allows for the phagocyte to come in and eat up that complex. So antigens are just a fancy way for saying an alarmin, or alarmin is a fancy way for saying antigen. Antibodies are a fancy way for saying an opsin, and opsin is a fancy way for saying a antibody. They create what are called complexes. They either tell cells to eat me as an opsin or as a disopsinin to not eat me. And we're going to talk about how that works in a second. So before I keep going on that, let's move over to B cells here. So this is the process as to which your immune system tries to clean up damage associated molecular patterns or PAMPs or other alarmants. So a B cell will see this histone floating around freely and electrostatically it will charge and bind to it. This causes the B cell to upregulate and create more of these guys. And so you now you have a antibody or an opsonin. That opsonin is able to bind to this alarm in here. And that complex there is able to make it so macrophages can electrostatically bind to that and eat that up. That way you can clear these damps or histones or these things that are in abundance. Now the problem happens with a few different ways. One in dysfunction of this pathway is molecular mimicry. So in the opsonin eat me way, we have a healthy cell here. And the healthy cell has some similar thing that looks very similar to the alarm. Let's say it's a nucleus of a cell in a neutrophil extracellular trap and the DNA is in the extracellular space. Now it's using the nucleus and the DNA as a way to capture whatever, let's say microbe is there or pathogen or toxin or to create a safe environment for wound healing cycles. Your body produces a lot of these antibodies or opsonins. Instead of binding to the damage associated patterns here, the damage, like the ones that are free around here, it will bind to other receptors that look very similar to that antigen through molecular mimicry and bind to them. And the cell will come in and create a electric charge that is allowed to bind to it and eat healthy cells. That's not a good thing. You do not want to just eat healthy cells based on their pattern like that. This is how autoimmunity can take a bigger process of eating your good cells. It's not the antibodies that are bad. It's the response of the antibodies that are there, but the antibodies are there as your cleanup system. So going back to the nucleus, right? If the nucleus was out in the extracellular space, then an opsin in here, let's say the damp represented something of the nucleus, like inside the cell, then the opsin would try to get in there and bind it and this guy would come in and eat it, all right? 
Now let's take a, another example of opsonization that's not a eat me signal, but instead I don't eat me signal. And this is commonly found in cancerous cells. So cancerous cells, they can have a highly negative charge around them, which as you know, the glycocalyx layer, something like that can create a don't eat me signal, a disopsonin signal. So we have in this example here, a bunch of alarmins here, actually good alarmins, ones that you want your immune system to recognize, but because it has this layer on its extracellular matrix, these guys, these antibodies cannot go in and get to the antigen because they actually have a physical repelling nature of it. And that creates this physical repelling nature of this phagocyte. So this phagocyte here is surveilling and sees, hey, cancer cell, I don't see a cancer cell. I am repelling against it nice and fine. So to me, this all looks good. These complexes are super common. The amount of antibody panels I've looked at, seeing these complexes are super common to notice that they are alarmants. So when we take a look at some very classic ones like anti-nuclear antibodies, that is when the nucleus is outside the cell, your body is going to try to clean up extra nuclear enzymes, nucleus enzymes, anti-nuclear antibodies. So we do the same thing with mitochondrial antibodies. So mitochondrial DNA could be in the extracellular space. Anti-DNA antibodies, anti-GPCR antibodies, the receptors on the outside of the cell can act as alarmins or get thrown into the extracellular space during apoptosis of like pyroptosis or ferroptosis. Histones, we literally just did the example of antihistone antibodies, anti-TSH receptor antibodies. You know how many people have gluten intolerance yet are having this problem. So when we take a look back at this en entire diagram, you can see how this cycle is not a problem of your immune system attacking you. It's a problem of what is creating the alarm and complex in the molecular mimicry as a byproduct and the obstinization dysfunction of whether it turns into eat me signals of healthy cells or disobstinin don't eat me signals of cancer cells. In autoimmunity, most people get stuck in this loop here. And that's why clearing the infection or the toxin or the damage usually clears the quote autoimmune antibodies. So hopefully now you can see why autoimmunity is a poor term for what's going on because your immune system is not attacking you. Your antibodies are not trying to hurt you. They're trying to clean up your system.